welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another review. And don't mind my hair. Um, it's been an interesting week this week. But anyway, we're, that's not why we're here. We're here for another review for the Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18. And this is episode 7. And it's called, um, hold on. I had it and now I don't. And I'll say this, the title is very deceiving. Um, oh, the gloves are off. So, <clears throat> this episode, for me, it felt like a filler. It didn't feel as quintessential as the title would have said. Like, um, I, so I watch other reviewers after I do my review because I don't want to get, you know, influenced by their opinions. And one of the reviews I was listening to or watching, they mentioned that last week felt like a filler. But to me, last week was a fun episode. It probably still was a filler, but this week really felt like a filler to me because not much happened here. I feel like um, the aftermath of the trip was pretty much all that happened here. But otherwise, it was kind of, I don't know, I would say out of all the episodes so far, this was probably like kind of a, a lackluster episode, I'll say. It wasn't horrible. It just wasn't. It literally was a filler. So that's, I guess that's what I'll say. But anyway, so um, it's the next day and we pan over to both the ladies. And so some, as we, as you know from last week, half of the group is at La Quinta and then the other half is at Big Bear. And at Big Bear, Tamara, um, Alexis, and oh yeah, I was. Tamara, Jesus Jugs, and um, Jen, they're talking about the night before, how much fun they had, and how much they really like Katie. They also hope, they're hoping that her, that Katie and like Heather can patch things up, because everyone on that side gets along with Heather. Like, pretty much almost everyone gets along with Heather. The only person that doesn't really get along with Heather too much is Emily. Emily's the only one that kind of has a little bit of a back and forth with Heather. Everyone else, especially in this season, gets along with Heather. Because in the past, Shannon and Heather were never on the same page. But with everything that's going on, that's not an issue this season. Um, anyway, so they're talking about that. And then back in La Quinta, um, and by the way, it's the morning, so everyone's kind of making breakfast, you know, just kind of winding down, and it's everyone's last day before they leave. And so, like, at La Quinta, uh, both Gina and Emily, they're still not good, so they're kind of just not really talking to each other, but they're all in the kitchen just doing breakfast. And then they all go and sit down outside, and that outside looks gorgeous. They have, like, um, some nice drinks and pineapples and the pineapple um looks like just a decent brunch situation and um basically shannon vents to all the ladies what's going on and she just vents and she really does break down um so she does share what's going on when it comes to the lawsuit of it all and everything is going on and the ladies are all being there for her all being there for her being very supportive and one thing I will say, um, I'm pleasantly surprised. I know a lot of y'all don't like Gina, but I am pleasantly surprised how Gina, when it comes to Shannon, she actually is on the right side of things. Because really, the way things left off last season, Gina could have easily been kind of like how Tamara was. But Gina's like, no, mm -mm. I, you know, and I think, it be, I think it has to do with the fact that Gina also, at one point in time, had a real issue with drinking, too. So she's like, I'm not going to contribute to someone's, you know, issues getting worse. And I just wish Tamara figured that out. So pretty much this whole entire episode, I'll just say it. This whole entire episode, most of the ladies are trying to convince Tamara, girl, you've been doing too much. You need to talk to Shannon again and figure it out. So that's kind of what a lot of the episode was. So then back at Big Bear, um, the Gen Only fan, the Gen OF recap happens again. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, why are they so obsessed with this, this whole thing? 
And um, so Katie asked um, Jen, because um, as you can tell, Katie and Jen are getting really close. And so, um, but anyway, Katie does ask Jen about the Will situation and Will's her ex-husband or, well, soon to be ex-husband. And things, unfortunately, are not getting better. Uh, so we know that their divorce is like not happening still. And, but we didn't know all the other things are going on. There's other things. So they're having issues with communication when it comes to the co-parenting situation. And, you know, Jen has nine kids. So yeah, they, they need to figure it out, but they still haven't figured out the co-parenting situation. And then also we find out that, so we know the story about how Jen was kind of the one who stepped out of the marriage and ended up dating Ryan, who she's with right now. Well, <laughs> Will is also in a relationship right now too with her former friend. And I'm like, wow, this is messy, messy books. So, um, Jen at first is, of course, very upset about the situation, but she's like, you know, if she makes you happy, then that's fine. And then Tamara, I don't know if this was a good thing or not. I kind of was just kind of sighing Tamara because, but you can never trust Tamara. Tam somehow it came up, came up. I'm not sure if it was around here. I think it was around here where, so Jen doesn't know what's going on with Will you know, when it comes to social media and all, because they have each other blocked for obvious reasons. And um, <clears throat> so Tamara still is following um, Will. And so she saw, she shows Jen a video of him having a great time with the kids and Laura, because Laura is a girl that he's with now. And I feel like she did that to kind of hurt Jen indirectly. I don't know. I just don't trust her showing her that because it did make Jen feel horrible. Cause she's like, he seems so much happier with, you know, he's, he's happier now that he's with her versus like he clearly neither of them were happy in their marriage. That's pretty much what it boils down to. And then, you know, Tamara does get emotional here, but she's really kind of, I feel like she's being emotional because she's thinking about herself and she talks about how her and her daughter, still are not talking because by the way i didn't even notice this until they until jim was venting all the women that are here in this side of the trip have all been divorced you know and all have children from like a marriage so they all can really relate to jen and what she's what she's talking about when it comes to the communication with co-parenting and still needing to make it work and then feeling guilty that, you know, the marriage is not working out, whether it's your fault or not. And yeah, so they did have a bonding moment. And if it wasn't Tamara, it would have been a beautiful scene. But I just, again, you can never trust Tamara. And the other reason why I say this is I already do. So for those who didn't know, the mid-season trailer is already out. And this peace treaty that Jen and Tamara has short-lived shocker so that's kind of the other reason why i'm just like okay i don't trust tamra <laughs> anyway uh next so back at la quinta we have um emily and gina they're about to go they go to play pickleball um they're still at la quinta and right away it didn't take very long Gina's like, hey, Emily, we need to talk. And then they get right into it. And honestly, I thought I'd be more interested in them going back and forth than I am. I don't really care. Because I guess what it boils down to, they are two sides of the same coin. They're literally arguing about the same thing about other people. So basically... Emily is annoyed with how Gina acts around Heather. Gina is annoyed with how Emily acts around Tamara. And both of them are accusing each other of changing. So they're basically jealous of the other friends that they have outside of their friendship. And 
they do and they do end up patching it up um but it it was it did end as a it did a, at first abruptly end because gina does what she always does yell and then walk away so she's horrible arguing it's not entertaining to watch so anytime she gets into it with anyone it's just not it's not fun to watch so i didn't think i i guess i thought it might have been different because it's her friend but i guess that's just how gina argues she don't she don't argue well at all so instead she yells and walks away but then it was funny because she tried to walk away, but she couldn't do her dramatic walk away because she was locked out of the house and the sprinkler system was going off. So <laughs> she looked kind of dumb and it was kind of funny. So Emily kind of just kept confronting her. It was like, girl, talk to me. No, 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 no. Because she literally couldn't go anywhere. So she's like, you're going to talk to me. So they again, they do eventually resolve it. And basically Heather and... So while this is happening, Heather and Shannon can hear them from the inside because they were all supposed to go play pickleball together, but they waited because as soon as they heard them, like, ooh, never mind, we're going to wait. Um, so that's kind of how that ended over there. And then back over at a Big Bear, we have Katie and Alexis talking about the Heather situation. And Alexis basically wants, you know, wants Katie to squash it with he with Heather because she's like, I really, you know, Heather is like one of my closest friends when it comes to this group. And I really, 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 really want you, um, I really want you two to like, you know, resolve it. And I don't know how true that is. As far as like Alexis and Heather being really, really close friends. I know they're close now, kind of recently, but I know historically they were not cool. Like, the people who are on the show still from Alexa's original time in the Housewives, none of them liked her originally. So I don't know what they're talking about when it comes to, like, I, I kind of know what she's talking about when she says that, but okay, maybe it did change. I don't know. But anyway, so that's kind of all that happens here. And then, um, while this is happening, we had Jen and Tamara talking about Shannon. And Jen confronts Tamara, and I'm like, yes. I, side note, I feel like I am loving Jen more and more this season. I know I gave her a hard time about how she's just kind of financially illiterate. And I do want her to figure that, figure that out, truthfully. But as far as her personality, she's just so lovable. Um... And I love she's like kind of one of the only people that's checking. She She's checking Tamara. She's like, girl, I'm going to need you to like squash things with like, you know, if, if we're going to be real, we're going to be real. So and she she did it very respectable. She's like, hey, Tamara, I think you the way you're approaching things with Shannon ain't correct. I'm going to need if you really, really care about her and you really, really value the friendship, you you need to squash it and you need to show. I mean. Yes, okay, if you want to really continue the tough love, you do that, but do it with love, not with what you're doing it right now, because that ain't it. Like, do it do it with your heart. And so Tamara took it in, didn't feel, she was like, okay, 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 okay. And so, yeah, that's kind of what happens here. And so back at La Quinta, after, you know, Gina and Emily squash it, Shannon and um, Heather do go outside to join them for pickleball, but they didn't even come back for pickleball. That kind of, that scene kind of ended early. But before that, you know, Heather's observing this, this whole entire situation, how Gina's been acting. And she does chalk it off. And maybe she's just, just giving her grace. I don't know. We'll find out as the season progresses what it is. But um, she's like, this is not the Gina I know. I don't know if like her home life is more stressful than what she's letting on. There's more going on than what she's letting on. But like, you know, this isn't the Gina I know. So that's, I feel like that was a little bit of an Easter egg. And there's going to be more to come with that. So, yeah. 
Um, and then also back at Big Bear, um, Alexis is still again threatening um, to expose Shannon. And that's kind of how that ends over there. And she was being very dramatic and annoying about it. And Katie was the only one who was still there. So Katie gets a full tea and we'll find out later on what was said. Okay, so then um, we have a little bit of a, a, a small housewives montage. I was going to say a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> child. But we have a little bit of a small um, housewives montage where we have Katie and her son outside with the dog. And um, then we have Jen cleaning up her dog poop in, inside because I guess her dog accidentally pooped inside. I'm like, yuck. And then Tamara and Eddie are walking their dog and Eddie's cleaning up the dog poop because Tamara's like, I don't do that. We, we've, we had that agreement a long time ago. So very much this montage is about dogs and poop. Anyway, so then um, Gina... So then Tamara shows up at Gina's place and Tamara hasn't been in her place. I think it's been a while and Tamara's showing her um, all the like construction that's happening inside the house because as we know, well, I guess what we found out, I didn't know this is how it was going to go, but Gina, instead of like moving, she's staying in the house and renovating it so that it's livable for all of them to just be in the house. And then her oldest can have um, the larger room and, you know, basically making it a better and easier living situation for the kids. And so she's kind of showing Tamara around when it comes to that and um, venting to Tamara about how, um, you know, her, her, um, I forgot how Travis feels about the whole entire thing. And I'm just kind of like, I'm sorry, but I don't care about the storyline. Because who cares what Travis thinks about this thing? I'm sorry. Like, to me, every time I hear about this, I'm still thinking, if he felt a way, then he needed to put more onto the table financially. And if he couldn't do that, he has to go. You really, like, it's not fair for, and, and I, well, this is whether you like Gina or not, but honestly, it just isn't fair for Gina to, like, sacrifice, you know, her kids' space and happiness for love. We would be looking at her a whole entire different way if she was to still stay shacked up with this dude who, from what we're hearing, and the way is being implied, he's not pulling his weight. He moved into your place. Y'all didn't get a place together. So he can feel away all he wants to. I'm sorry, but I don't feel sorry for him at all. Maybe I'm a little bit jaded. <laughs> and I, and there's no maybe. I'm probably jaded kiss over here. I'm probably super jaded. And I mean, this is one of the main reasons why I'm single. Because I'm just like, I'm at a point in my life where I'm going to need my partner whoever it is, to pull their weight. And I'm not sacrificing my lifestyle, happiness, or nothing for another person ever again in life. I won't be doing that. I'm also not going to be sacrificing my independence for anyone either. Yeah. I mean, and I just, I guess whenever I hear this Gina and Travis storyline, I'm just kind of like, oh, I don't care about it. I feel bad, but I don't care about it. But anyway, so while this is happening, <laughs> and I'm also kind of tired and just, uh, I'm really tired. It's been a rough work week. <laughs> I'll talk about it in another video another time, but child, your girl's been going through it this week. But anyway, so um, then while this is happening, Emily, with her twin boys, is on a play date with Katie and her son. And it's actually kind of cute. And side note, outside of this, you know, Heather situation, I really do like Katie. Um, so I'm hoping they could just resolve it and they could be done with it because it's stupid. It's not really a, a true beef. It's really petty. It's dumb. But anyway. So, um... 
they're re- so they're both recapping the girls' trip with, to each other. And the subject of Gina and Heather comes up um, because Emily shares how, like, the trip was fun on their end. But, yeah, there was some tension because Gina and Heather were, like, not really getting along, but they did resolve it. And as this is being said, Katie, I'm going to get on you on this. Stop prejudging Heather. You don't know her. But I think she's also saying like, oh, you know, she is using this to like use her discernment when it comes to Gina, though. So this is smart. This, I'm here with you on that. She's like, I thought Gina was a girl's girl, but she's like a Heather's girl's girl. And yeah. 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 Um. And also, don't try to call her out because she'll just walk. She'll scream at you and walk away. We know that's how she argues. But anyway. So then on the other side here, then we have um, Tamara and Gina. They're doing the recap also. And the subject of Shannon and Alexis comes up. Because Gina basically asks, like, was Alexis, like, still doing what she's been doing? Talking constantly about Shannon when she wasn't there? And she's like, no. And then Tamara's like, no, but she just wouldn't shut up, though. <laughs> Which was true. And then um, they do talk about Shannon. And then they get to, like, the subject of, like, DUIs. And Gina also had to check Tamara on how she's been behaving when it comes to the Shannon situation of it all. Because Tamara's being so judgy and doesn't understand that this ain't it. So even when Tamara's trying to do her judgy thing, she's like, you know, when you when that happened to you, you stopped drinking and all that. And and um, and Gina was at, correctly correct her. She's like, no, I didn't. I didn't. I that took some time. I didn't get sober until a couple years ago. You know, you got to do that on your own time. And you're for you're trying to force her to confront a situation at your time and that's not fair to her she's like honestly when i got the dui i hit rock bottom so guess what i did more of i wanted to drink more and i'm just like hello hello and i just don't understand why Tamara doesn't understand that if you already so if you really do truly think that your friend has a drinking problem do you think that bad life situations, even though it is drinking related, is going to make them stop drinking? No. The, the default is to go back to what you know. And unfortunately, if you've been coping with your problems with alcohol, you're going to do that some more. And there's going to be a battle to try to stop doing that. And you're going to be in denial for a while before you realize that that's what you're doing. Like, it's going to take some time to, you know, get it figured out. And it's going to take some time to realize, oh, can I actually drink socially and not over drink? Or do I actually have a problem where I really just need to put it down altogether? And I think for every individual is different. And you can't really put, you know, an instruction manual on how that works for everyone, you know. And so I think talking to Gina, Tamara was like, okay, dang. Because <laughs> um, Gina was like, had to like literally give her straight, straight no chasers. Like, girl, you're, you're actually, you're not helping. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, how many times did people have to tell her she's not helping? But I'm glad. I feel like Gina's the one who really got through to her, even though she said Jen did. But I think it was really Gina. Um, because Gina went through. A similar situation before anyway so then um back with katie and emily katie does tell emily what um about alexis threats and what was said so according to john jansen there's clay um he claims i have a video of shannon almost running over his daughter the night of the dui and he wants to expose it and show the world. I mean, he already said it. He doesn't need... And so, 
Emily is disgusted, just like how um, Jen was disgusted, just even at the idea that there was a video. Because it's just like, you're going to kick this woman while she's down already. What is the point? And Emily was on point. Honestly, this episode, I love Emily was a non-issue this episode. Emily was like, Emily was, was, was talking some sense this episode. She's like, if she, she's like, if John and Alexis are so happy, why are they, why does Shannon live rent free in both their heads? And why are they doing all this stuff to try to torment Shannon? And I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> I, I don't even know. But all I, all I could chalk it off to is they're disgusting people. Because even they're just disgusting people. Whether it's true or not, it's just disgusting. It's all disgusting. Because, like, I'm sorry, but I guess for me... She already did do damage with this DUI. She knows she messed up. I mean, clearly she was not in the right state of mind to be, drink to, to be drinking and driving. I mean, she shouldn't have been drinking and driving at all. Like, that's clear. So, once she got behind the wheel, she messed up. After that, you know, all bets were off. So, the fact that this man wants to, like, expose it more... And show the video more. It's like. What is the purpose of this? Like. Ugh. Anyway. Next. Okay. So a couple more things happened this episode. Um, so this is. Again this is a pretty short episode. Um, pretty much a filler. So um, Jen and Ryan. They go on a spa day. Um, Jen recaps the trip. And talks about the whole OF of it all. And they joke around a little bit about it. And <clears throat> then, <clears throat> sorry, um, Jen and Ryan talk, discuss Jen's parenting style. And I do agree with Ryan. Jen does need to, you know, be a little bit tougher. Because, I mean, you probably could tell based off of just how she is on the show, she overly coddles her kids. Um, and she said it got much worse once the divorce started happening. And so now she's trying to set all these ground rules. And for some of her kids, it's like not going to fly, really. For example, they show her trying to like set a curfew with her 17-year-old son, who for 17 years didn't have a curfew, and now she's trying to set one. You know, things like that. So, um, they're, so they're trying to work together and work through the parenting style of it all and go from there. And although I don't care for Ryan, I am happy that Jen does at least have someone to help her out through this hard time. And she just kind of let her hair down a little bit. But once this, once this divorce is over, she does need to like work on being independent. Uh, I know that's going to be difficult. And honestly, after this episode, I felt for her even more. She talked more about how the communication and the co-parenting is just not going well. Because that was the other, that was a part, that was a missing piece that I don't think none of us knew that the co-parenting wasn't even going well. It's like, well, sheesh. <sighs> and, I mean, I imagine that's difficult when it's just one child. It's nine of them. Anyway. So then, next we see that Tamara is calling Jen while Jen's in her confessional. Um, talking about how she's going to go and meet Shannon. And then Shannon is in her car and she contacts Heather talking about meeting Tamara. So then they have that sit down. And child, at least for once Tamara wasn't yelling at her, but she still was keeping that same energy. And so, um, at first they weren't getting anywhere. And Shannon ended up storming out for a little bit to kind of just, you know, collect herself. And then she came back and articulated herself and ate her up well. And she was like, look, she's like, look, Tamara, I cannot handle you constantly attacking me. This is not working for me. Like, I understand that I messed up. I made a major, I made a lot of major mistakes. But, and so she finally, so Shannon stopped, you know, pointing the finger back. 
Because the thing is with Tamara, that's not going to work. Because Tamara is a is a high almighty hypocrite. <laughs> like, hello. Um, but Shannon was like, look, I'm going through a lot. I have a lot going on. And I forgot to mention, Shannon is going through a lot. She did vent to the ladies about how her being a... Because she's also an empty nester now. All this is happening. And she's an empty nester. So she is going through a lot. I'm just like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And so... But basically, Tamara is like talking. So she's talking to Tamara about everything that's going on. And I'm going to hold you. When Tamara did finally apologize to her, it was so disingenuous. I did not believe it. Um, Because I think Tamara ended up letting it go and forgiving her because she knew she was going to get eat up. I don't think she did it out of the genuosity of her heart. I don't believe she did that. So she basically does apologize, though, to Shannon eventually because Shannon, she basically made Shannon break down even more. And Shannon was like, look, I'm going through a lawsuit right now. I can't. <laughs> and you have not been like and the support that like I hang out with a very small, tight knit crew and they've been the most supportive that, that they've been the most the most supportive I've ever had in my life. And which hurt Tamara. Um, cause Tamara's like, I haven't been there for you. And she's like, honestly, not this moment. No, you've been tearing me down. You've been defamatory. You've been saying all these things about me yet. You don't even know what's going on with me. You have no idea. And that's where she shares their lawsuit situation. But see, this is what I don't like. I I'm looking at Tamara funny because you knew about the lawsuit. Alexis told you about it. And, and I feel like you're trying to pretend that you don't know about this lawsuit, even though Alexis told you that John was going to do that. So you knew about this. Um, I don't know. I just don't trust. I don't trust Tamara. <laughs> I don't trust Tamara. So anyway, the episode does end where they do make up. And Tamara's like, I just feel bad. According to her, she's saying she's feel bad. She's like, the fact that she's getting sued again and what gets me is I still don't understand how Tamara and Alexis are even friends because she's just like, she was even reflecting back about how Shannon and her were trauma bonding the last time she got a had a lawsuit. And this time she's like, the fact that's happening to her again with everything else she has going on, that's, you know, she's like, even though Alexis is my friend, this is team too much. That's what Tamara said. But I think she's did that because she knew she had to do that. She can't go on the, go and stay on the sinking ship that is Alexis Bellino. Because literally everyone else on the cast is telling you, you are effing this up. So you knew she was going to, you knew she was going to patch it up. But anyway, that is, that does conclude the episode. Um, looks like the next episode, they do some type of murder mystery thing of some sort. I think it might be Tamara's event, but we see Nat in the, in the preview. But we also do see Vicky, but we see Nat. Which ironically, I think Nat would have been better on this show to begin with. She should have never been on um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. It never made sense for her to be on that. But anyway, so yeah, that does conclude the um, video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.